So in this section, we will talk about the registration uh, management states uh, in the 5G core. Uh, there are namely two states uh, in the 5G core. You have the uh, RM deregistered uh, registration management for RM uh, deregistered, and you have the RM uh, registered. Uh, and the UE um, goes back and forth between uh, each of these states. So if you are in a deregistered state um, and <clears throat> you perform a registration uh, message and you get uh, and you get a registration accept, that means the network has given you uh, the permission to access the network, you will enter in what is called a RM re registered state. Now, if you are in a registered state already and you get a reject message from the UE, uh, from the network, uh, you are going to transition back to the deregistered state. Or if you are in a deregistered and the network repeatedly keeps rejecting you, so you will remain in this state. Uh, whereas if you are in a registered state and you keep uh, renewing your registration and in 5G there are uh, uh, scenarios where you have to re-register uh, similar to like what we had uh, the tracking area update process right in 4G there is something called a registration uh, update process periodic registration update and as long as your registrations are successful you will uh, you will remain in the registered state. Now, what do these uh, each state actually mean? So let's read about that. So in the RM deregistered state, the UE is not registered with the network. Okay, so something like a scenario where the UE say is powered off. The UE context in the AMF holds no valid location or routing information for the UE. So the UE is not reachable by AMF. Okay, uh, because the UE is not connected, the AMF does not really know who this subscriber is, where it is, uh, so it has no valid location or routing information. However, some parts of the UE context may be stored in the UE uh, and the AMF um, to avoid running an authentication process during the registration procedure. So what this means is uh, in the UE, um, so what happens is like where we have the UE, let's kind of draw this out. Uh, this is your UE, uh, this is your AMF. Um, yeah. uh, by the way, these states are registered and uh, deregistered states are maintained in the AMF. And then you have your uh, rest of the 5G core here. Now, when a subscriber connects to the network, it uh, performs what is called a registration message. The AMF downloads a bunch of information from the 5G core related to like subscriber uh, subscription, right? There is a subscription um, and you have, um, you have some policies, so you can have policies and all these information is downloaded by the AMF from the 5G elements, uh, be it the PCF, uh, be it the UDM, um, and they are maintained in the AMF. Uh, the AMF is essentially caching all this information. Now, if this UE were say to power off, right? If it powers off, that means it uh, deregisters from the network, right? In that case, this information that is in AMF for this subscriber may be cached. So that's why we say that some parts of the UE context may be stored in the UE and the AMF. So AMF stores all the caching information that was downloaded for the subscriber. At the same time, the UE maintains the last known um, AMF that it was connected to. So the UE has some part uh, of information regarding the AMF as well, even though it has deregistered from the network. Now, when it comes back, it will send uh, uh, another registration request. Let me use a different color. So say it comes back, uh, it sends another uh, reg message, right? In that case, uh, register message. In that case, the AMF does not have to download all this again. It can just use whatever was cached locally, right? Um, so that's why uh, there is the advantage of caching um, 
some of the previous information. Now in the registered state, uh, the UE shall perform mobility registration update procedure if the current uh, tracking area indicator of the serving cell uh, is not in the list of tracking area indicators that the UE has received from the network in order to maintain the registration and enable AMF to page the UE. So let us understand that. So in, in a 5G uh, coverage, you can have multiple, uh, what we call uh, tracking areas, right? So you can have your, as an example, say you have six, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And a UE uh, is in idle mode, so it's not actively uh, sending data, and it, it kind of moves from one to two to three uh, tracking area. So it was in tracking area one initially, it then moved to two, and then it moved to three. Now, in order for the AMF to keep track of the UE on a tracking area level, uh, it needs to do a process called mobility registration update every time it changes the tracking area. Uh, and this is similar to what we had in LTE, which was called a tracking area uh, update procedure, right? The tau procedure. So, um, yep, it, it, it does that because AMF has to maintain uh, the reachability for uh, the paging uh, for uh, the UE for like uh, incoming downlink data. Uh, the UE also shall perform periodic registration update uh, triggered by the expiration of the periodic update timer to notify that the UE is still active. So we, we talked about that the UE will up perform a, a registration update procedure if the tracking area of the serving cell changes, like as it moves here. In addition, so say if the UE was in tracking area 3, um, there is a timer T, uh, there is a timer T after which it has to reinitiate the periodic registration. And what this tells is, uh, this tells the AMF that even though I'm in the same uh, tracking area as I was before, I'm just telling the network that, hey, I'm still there. If you have incoming data for me, uh, uh, this is my tracking area and uh, this is my serving cell and uh, you, th that's how you get hold of me. So, uh, so uh, in registered state, just to sum it up, in registered state, we perform a mobility registration uh, update if the tracking area changes or if the timer expires for the periodic. And in the deregistered, uh, nothing really happens in terms of signaling, but both the UE uh, and the AMF can retain certain parts of the context. So that is uh, it for the registration states. Uh, next, we will look into the connection management states.